while I'm talking to you, I'm like getting a really self conscious. Why? <laughs> because now my name is Chip Tooth Tiff. <laughs> I have a chip tooth. So now you guys can call me Chip Tooth Tiff. Chip Tooth Tiff. Um, so yeah, I was really stupid this weekend. R-O-T-N, let, let me present, present to you the Rotten Podcast. The Rotten Podcast. How do you want me to say it? Rotten. All right, guys, welcome back to the Rotten Podcast. We are on episode 24, baby. Woo. Wait, is it actually 25 or 24? I don't know. Who cares about the numbers at this point? All right, at this point, we need to stop saying the numbers because yeah. I always get freaked out and getting it wrong. Um, we had a very eventful week this week. We did. We went to um, Fish on Sunday at Hollywood Bowl. Yes. I took you to your first Fish show, which I used to be, and I still love Fish, but I have gone to over 20 shows. That's I've, insane. Yeah. I just, I couldn't imagine loving something so much. I would pay to go to it 20 times. Yeah. No, I get it, but I'm sure maybe you got some from the experience that it's cool. It's really fun, and it's it would. It's not like I would go see Drake or J Cole twenty times because the shows are probably relatively the same, despite mm -hmm. maybe a few new singles. But what makes Fish in jam bands great in general, you know, I love the Grateful Dead, is that you never know what you're going to get when you go to a show because so much of it is jamming, live improv, where you can get lost in the music and there is this magical moment that you feel when you're there. Yeah, so Matt surprised Matt, Andrew, sorry, Matt surprised me, Andrew, and um, oh my God, my brain is not braining today, guys. We we're filming this on a Monday after we partied all weekend. You want to just start that over? No, I think it's hilarious. Kaylee, wow, I can't believe I forgot Kaylee's name for a second. So yeah, Matt surprised me, Andrew, and Kaylee with fish tickets because we were leaving to Denver and he wanted to um, have them babysit our kids. So Matt had to kind of pay them off with some fish tickets. Some fun. Yeah, so Matt surprised me with a trip to Denver, Colorado to go see Skrillex for my 30th birthday this year. And we At just, Red Rocks. Yes, at Red Rocks. It was incredible. We did it. We hung out with some of our friends in Denver and they're just like such humble, cool, fun people to hang out with. And Matt and I had the best time. So fun. Yeah. And that was something I wanted to do for your 30th because I have seen so many shows at Red Rocks. You know, I used to live in Denver and um, I've always hyped it up to you. I've taken you there on hikes to look at the actual venue. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, that was something we never got to do in your 20s. So I thought we got to start your 30s off with doing something I've always talked about wanting to take you for. It is so beautiful up there. If you guys ever had the chance to go see Red Rocks or go see a show at Red Rocks, please freaking do it. The way the sun sets over the rocks and it turns everything like red and orange and yellow, it's beautiful. It's and so pretty. It's just like a really cool drive to even drive up to. So if you ever just like visit it. And the sound is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing I noticed was the sound so was good. crystal clear. But we were so sitting, loud. our friends like got there like two hours before doors opened and like scattered out seats. So we're on level, or we're on, I think. We were on like the 10th row. 10. Yeah. Yeah. So we were pretty close to the music. They opened the doors at 7 and the show started like at 7.15, 7.30. And we didn't probably get into the venue until what, 8, 8.30 yeah, or no, something? No, 7.45 I would say. But the line was so long. So I mean, we were long. in line forever. It took took so long. Yeah, I didn't know how it was going to go because it was a five-hour DJ set. And that's what he announced when he announced the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've never gone to just a five-hour oh DJ set. Matt was like shocked that he didn't have to pee once. I know. Like Skrillex never peed. And I'm, I'm convinced that he had like a pee bucket underneath the table that no one can see. But everyone, like I don't, I was like, to me, this is not weird, going five hours without peeing. Going eight hours without peeing, not a big deal. Going 12 hours, not a big deal. Like, I only pee twice, twice a day, okay? Sometimes I three. I pee like 10 times. Yes, Matt, on the dot, 4 a.m. or 3 a.m., he's peeing, and that's when I know it's time <laughs> to go to bed, um, which is another funny story. But everyone was so shocked, because I guess everyone pees normally, and everyone was like, I can't believe he went five hours without peeing, and I'm like, I thought there was. That's I normal. thought I thought there would be an intermission or a Same. stop. Like because I've fish never had one. Yeah, it's pretty normal to have either a set break, especially when you have a long show like mm -hmm. that. And so Rest I was expecting too, right? there. Yeah, I was expecting there to be a set break, but he legitimately did not stop DJing 
for five hours straight. Mm -mm. I've never seen that long of a show. <laughs> and it was so good. I don't know how you play EDM, bass, dance music for that long and keep people's attention, but man, it was so good. I mean, he's the, <laughs> he's the GOAT. Like, Skrillex is so bomb. I know. I wish, I, like, really regret not listening to more of his songs beforehand. Like, I've heard of Skrillex. I've listened to it in 2014 when he was much bigger. But I really have missed the last 10 years of his music making. And so I felt like everyone was, like, on such a bigger high because they knew his songs. And I only knew, like, his old, old shit. Yeah. But I still had, like, the best, best time. Yeah, I don't know too many of his songs. Yeah. But you don't really need to. You Let's know, go back to part. Red Rocks. I, I'm like excited to go back to Red Rocks. I know. And I had been looking for the past two, three years to try to take you to a show, but I hadn't found any show really that worthy of going. And so when I saw that he announced this show, I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity. Um, so I, it was a good one. It was a good one. Historic. Also, also, Matt and I have like the best. I feel like we need to go to more concerts because there is nothing more than I love seeing you enjoy music for some reason. Really? Yeah. Like seeing you enjoy fish, seeing you enjoy um, Skrillex for some reason. You have like this like aura about you that you are just like, I mean, maybe you can say this about anyone, right? They're like always happy at a concert, but I feel like you just have like this love and passion for music that like you just like are just like so happy to be immersed in music. I mean, it's always been a huge driving factor yeah. in my decisions, in my life. That's <laughs> one of the reasons why I wanted to move out to Colorado because mm -hmm. they have so many good shows and venues and the culture in Colorado around going to see shows. I mean, you can kind of tell yeah. from going to your first one, there's like really big groups of people. It's so much more of a social activity. And I wish more of our friends liked going to shows in LA. I feel like yeah. it's not really... Yeah. A scene where people like they're just too used to it. Yeah. They're just too used to being entertained in multiple ways. Yep. And for me, I used to go to so many concerts. Mm -hmm. So I love that atmosphere. I get so much fulfillment and joy of being seeing live music. It just does something for me that mm -hmm. most things don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, while I'm talking to you, I'm like getting a really self conscious. Why? Because now my name is Chip Tooth Tiff. <laughs> snaggle Tooth. I don't actually have a Snaggle Tooth. I have a Chip Tooth. So now you guys can call me Chip Tooth Tiff. Chip Tooth Tiff. I honestly, it's kind of funny because like before, honestly, my teeth were really good looking. And I'm like, now this gives me a little like flavor, a little extra spice, a little like personality to my teeth. Um, so yeah, I was really stupid this weekend. I wasn't that f***ed up when it happened, by the way. I had gotten up previously at red rocks and we're at an after party with some of our friends in denver and um i was chewing gum and this gum was like a four hour old piece of gum and you know how it gets like really freaking hard and to like chew on it it's just it really works your jaw it just really works your jaw and so i was just talking to my friend um kenzie and we we're just having like a normal like deep conversation that happens whenever you're slightly drunk and while I'm talking to her, I, I'm like, I do this sometimes. Like I notice when I eat, I slide my jaw really weird because I have TMJ. So sometimes it feels good to like slide my jaw. Too much like, jaw? I have very <laughs> strong kidding. jaws. Yeah, very strong jaw, um, which is why I get Botox in it. What does TMJ stand for? Do you know? I, I mean, I used to know, but I could not tell you. On the I'm going to call it too Something much jaw. Joy. Too much jaw. <laughs> Wait, TM. Wow, I just got that. I just got that. I know you didn't say anything. I was like, maybe it wasn't that funny. No, I. Or maybe I that's what it really stands for. No, it's like something muscular <laughs> yeah. joint, or yeah. I don't know. Um, but while I was talking to her, I noticed I like slid my front, my bottom and top row front teeth together like this. Oh. Just because I was working on that piece of gum on the back of my teeth, uh, and then all of a sudden. I'm biting into my tooth. Oh, so shit. I in front of her, my eyes go wide. I, we're having a deep conversation. All of a sudden, I'm like, like literally, and she was like, "What's wrong? Are you okay?" And I'm like, "I think I just chipped my tooth." And don't do drugs, guys. I wasn't on drugs, kidding. dude. I was literally just dude, dude. I was freaking just having a good time. I was just having. A, I was sipping a white claw literally at that time. Chewing a stupid piece of gum that was rock solid, and I knew I should have spit it out earlier, but I just like wanted something like in my mouth to chew at the time. I should have just spit it out, but 
it became like a storyline. Everyone was like, let me see your teeth. Let me see your teeth. Let me yeah. see your teeth. And I'm like, guys, this is so, I wasn't that embarrassed. I was like, guys, this is so embarrassing. Like, I just feel like I was like, everyone looked at me like I was the fucked up person in the group. And I was like, I'm not that fucked up. Yeah. I, I promise I'm not fucked up. Yeah. You never get that fucked up. But I was like the embarrassment. Like, I know I'm going to get it fixed when I'm here in LA. Like, this is our first night back. I'm not like worried about it. And this is not the first time this has happened to me. But what I was thinking when it happened was that I was really embarrassed if you saw it. Because let me tell you guys, if Matt had a kink, it would be people's mouths. He like stares at people's mouths and always. You're making it sound so weird. I just like, you know, the question of. What do you notice first about someone? Yeah. You've asked me that. We've gone through that. And I always say someone's mouth. Me, it's shoes and nails for some reason. Well, I got really bad nails, so. Well, now I, I have really bad teeth. See? You don't have bad teeth. You just got a chip tooth, well, which you, you can get fixed. Remember, it was like maybe two months in us dating. I actually I actually chipped my tooth, too, on a piece of pizza while I was eating it. Do I do remember. remember yeah. And you had to get it fixed. I know, but I didn't tell you because I was really embarrassed Aww, how because cute. you had, again, told me like the reason why you liked me was I had really good lips and a good mouth. It's not the reason that I liked you. It's I one know. of the things yes. that I like about you. You said it was one of the first things you noticed about me, though. Yes. When asked the question of what was the first thing you noticed about me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or someone in general. Yeah. Like their dental hygiene, their mouth. To me, it's like eyes, eyes. I don't know. But yeah. yeah. So when this happened to me the other night, like two nights ago, I was like, Fuck, Matt's gonna. St- I know you're gonna love me either way. Like, trust me, you make crazy, me feel like yeah. loved in so many ways. But I was like, oh, damn it. Like, if you we hear that, p- guys? I make her feel loved in so many ways. I'm gonna clip that sound bite. No. Keep mm. it on my phone, favorite it. So when I need to pull it out and use it for ammo, when you say, you don't love me, you need me, de- and I'm just gonna be like, really? What's this? What's this? Okay, so either way, I, yeah. Either way, you chipped your tooth. Either way, I chipped my tooth. And now <laughs> I, I'm i embarrassed about it. I've been like telling anyone that's like looked at me, like, I'm sorry if I'm smiling at you weird. It's because I've chipped my tooth and I don't want to show you my teeth. Like yesterday, Matt made a new friend on the airplane and it was like one of the first things I said to him. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had a great weekend. We that did. was the perfect amount of time three days, to be gone. Three days, three nights, yes. Thursday to Sunday. The, the hotel, hotel you booked, oh my God, beautiful. It was so great. I love, that's what I realized this year, even when we went to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Staying at a good hotel is Take such, it is everything, especially with the convenience of how close restaurants and food is when you're on vacation and you don't have like a kitchen or your coffee or whatever. That is such a determining factor of how enjoyable it is getting mm-hmm. food, having activities and being in LA, it's sometimes 35, 40 minutes for me to just go to the gym or 20 minutes to go to the grocery store. So being on vacation, a part of that, the nice part is being in an area where food is so accessible. In the hotel we stayed at, the source in Denver, so epic because it's kind of like a market. Mm -hmm. On the bottom floor, they have like six or seven restaurants in the building and there's a couple bars. There's a rooftop bar. There's a cafe. So all you have to do is just you know, whenever you're hungry, go downstairs. go downstairs and the atmosphere is lively. People are working. It's a beautiful space to just hang out in. And so I, that was so enjoyable. I, was like, I could live here in this hotel. It was so nice. Everything was at our convenience. Plus everything in Denver is so close. Like all the dinners we go to, it's five minutes. It's 0.4 miles. It's going to a friend's house in another town. It's only 15 minutes. I'm like, this is like going to the grocery store for yeah. me. That's easy. That's what I really miss about living in like a downtown area. Like when I was living in downtown LA, we lived on top of restaurants that were really good. And so now I'm you like. You couldn't pay me to live in downtown I LA. know. But what about it's New terrible. York City? I mean, New York City's dope. It's just Do too we? much. Uh, too much hustle and bustle. There. I need space. Do you hear my I like list? Space. I was like, I want to spend a month there. You got a little air. I got a little got air whistle. Airway now. Yeah. <laughs> you could like shoot water through your little. It's like a half crescent moon. Sorry to hear on your that. tooth. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's too bad I'm really bad at whistling, but I probably could whistle through <laughs> the tooth. Um, do you think we could ever spend a whole month in New York City? Like, would you ever be down, or would you hate that idea? We can bring Theo and Zoe. I don't know how we'd bring them so far. The same one we'd bring them to Denver, Colorado, like you were talking about all weekend. I was thinking about like driving them. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, yeah. That sounds weird. If we were staying there for a long time, it's only 15 hours. I mean, it's a long. Two hour plane ride versus. Two hours to New York? What? Five. I'm talking about Denver versus a 16 hour drive. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it would be a fun experience for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, just like I I loved just going downstairs at our hotel mm-hmm. and just That eating. was crazy. Having our friends want to come visit us at the hotel, which would, like never happens. That never happens whenever you're traveling. You never have. What, when we were in Denver? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like, oh, like you are on top of like a really nice restaurant. Like, let's go there. Yeah. It was called Staff Theo, Desk. what are you doing in here, oh buddy? Oh my God, Theo. What you doing, buddy? Theo. Oh, he's wiggle butting so, he's so hard. Happy. I Theo, wish you sit. guys are seeing this. If you guys aren't watching us on Spotify. Oh, you know Good what boy. we've been really Theo bad down. at? Mm. Shouting us out. We only shout us out at the end of every podcast episode. We need to start doing it in the middle. Guys, subscribe to us if you guys are not subscribed. Yeah. Literally. Get with the program. Yeah. Come on. Comment down below, guys. We're making great Talk content, having great I conversation. I love talking to you guys. And I feel like <laughs> give us a comment down below. You can give us a comment on Spotify now or on YouTube. So if you're not watching us on there, you're missing out. Come talk to us. Hang out with us. Like we feel like you guys are our best friends. It's like our like weekly therapy doing this together. It really is. It makes us like get together, look presentable, have a good conversation. I dress better for our podcast than <laughs> I dress for a date night for a freaking festival. Really I know. But like I would never wear this out. Like these types of outfits out. I love your outfits. For the pod or just yeah, in they're general? Like, you've elevated your fashion sense for oh. the pod. I have. I ha- this is how I've always wanted to dress, but I don't have any chances to ever like go to like a lunch date looking like this. I feel like I'd be overdressed. Oh my goodness, Theo, Theo is being. Should we let him stay? What what are what are your thoughts? Yeah, he's right now? fine. He's chilling. He's so happy. But something I'd love to talk about is AI. Yeah. So we should. two weeks ago, I'm sure a lot yeah. of people saw the video of Drake. It was an AI made song by this guy named Ghostwriter. And he was wearing like a pretty much like a ghost costume. He just has like a sheet over his bed. I think I missed this. I only heard the audio. Yeah. So my buddy Mario sent me a TikTok two hours after this video was posted by this guy who goes by Ghostwriter. And he posted a video of him making an AI Drake song. And in the video, he's just wearing a sheet over his face like a ghost. And it's anonymous. So you don't know who this guy is. But he plays this song that he made that's AI generated. And it's was so mind blowing. So, so within two hours, I saw the video, but it picked up so much traction. It went so viral. All the media publications talked about this story, and it really became a conversation of ethics, um, creator rights, Copyright, IP, yeah. just so many different factors. Because what was so mind blowing to me was we've seen slowly sort of the development of AI where, oh, you can use someone's voice. Okay, cool. It still sounds a little robotic. Okay, these are just funny. But this was the first time that I saw AI where I was like mind blown with how realistic it sounded. And I was like, this song is fire. And everybody was like, wow, blown away. How did this guy make this song that is Drake, AI Drake, just as good as As Drake Drake. and so many people in the comments were like how is he doing Drake better than Drake like this is better than anything he's dropped in the past couple years or whatever which I don't think that's true the song is a slap Drake I don't think it scares Drake I don't think a guy like that is scared about people using AI because so quickly UMG and the music companies shut it down it was removed off of Spotify almost immediately that following Monday and it's now been brought to light as far as how do we navigate this new industry and this new world we live in with AI? So, well, some artists are taking it differently. Like Drake seemed upset about it because he posted about it, correct? Versus Grimes, we just heard, is allowing anyone to use her voice as AI as long as they're not talking about any like touchy subjects like Nazi or Holocaust or like yeah. things that are really bad, like saying the N word and stuff. And yeah, I wonder what the music companies are actually going to, you know, crimes could say that, but then the company that owns her music could be yeah, like, like, no, yeah. that's not allowed because you're using the likeness of somebody to create something. And so I was so blown away by this that I was like, how did this guy make this? And so I went on a wormhole and spent like a whole week watching videos and I think there is a common misconception with people assuming, okay, AI, AI, just, AI just generated this. Someone has the technology and they just put AI make a song with Drake that's about this and boom, it spit this thing out. 
to my surprise, which I kind of knew, it is so much work to create something that not only sounds realistic, but something that sounds good. Yeah. And there isn't just a, you type something in and click a button and then it spews out this, this creation. You have to use so many different things to make that product. And I found there's different sites for creating melodies. There's different sites for creating lyrics. You use it's like you use a funnel of five different applications to create one product. Mm -hmm. And I realized that this was this guy's taste. It wasn't just that he has so much skill to be able to make an AI song that good. Well, like the input can't be make me a Drake song. It has to be like, it so has this to be guy so had to write more. the lyrics. He had to make yeah. the beat or find a beat to work with it. He had to make the melodies. He had to do so many different things. And so that really got me thinking about AI in such a fascinating way because I know there's so many people out there and we see all these articles and headlines like AI will replace X amount of jobs. Like if you don't have a, you know, a skill like AI will replace you. And mm -hmm. even if you do. So like I said, I went down this wormhole. I started doing so much research in, in looking into this stuff. And I spent a lot of time talking with my brother about this because we're so fascinated. And what I realized is that right now AI is still, it's not fully there, like even using chat GPT and all these other platforms, it isn't giving you the best things. You have to get really good at figuring out how to use it. And that's what I encourage people to do is spend the time to figure out how to use it to your advantage, because the better you get at writing prompts, using this technology, you'll be able to actually implement that for whatever you're doing. Get comfortable, get familiar, because by the time that they are really good, you want to have experience under your belt with how to use this so you can become more efficient with it. Yeah. Because AI will replace people's jobs and it's not going to be AI. It's going to be people that know how to use AI are going to be the ones that are the leaders in their industry. So for example, even with music, there's so many different things you can use AI to help you with writing lyrics, writing melodies, creating different things. But you have to figure out how to use those things. So the biggest artists, the biggest creators, I believe, are going to be people that have the best skill for using AI and using this new technology. Yeah, but don't you feel like a lot of people are going to look down on artists that use this? I know like you can hide the fact that you use it. But There's going to be no like way to really musicians tell. Musicians will ever feel a little guilty that they're cheating in a way because some people are seeing it as like people are cheating. I, I understand it's new technology, right? Like people used to think accountants that you're that were using Excel was cheating, which is yeah. insane to not have an accountant use Excel nowadays. But will there be a time where people are like, I'm looking down on you for using ChatGPT, for using AI. And so like the musicians will always feel like, oh, like I, I never actually made it myself. Like I got help. So you kind of said it there with the Excel example. And in the music space, it is kind of the same thing where there have been so many tools that have been um, that have come out new technologies for music that do feel like cheating. And I was even hesitant to use some of them at first like until I realized other professional people were using them. There's one called Splice, which I mm. learned about in like 2015 or 2017, which is pretty much a subscription where you pay and you get access to all these different samples that you can download. And that used to be what making music was back in the day. How are you finding these samples? How are you getting them? That was the skill. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you pay six ninety nine, and you have a plethora <laughs> of different sounds at your fingertips where anyone can make a beat in five seconds. But again, you need to know how to use the technology to your advantage. So with that being said, I think it's the exact same thing where it's not about the technology. Yeah. And in Drake's case... And I saw, I was reading comments about this. It doesn't matter if AI made the song because Drake's brand and IP, he's going to have to eventually, if he is using AI, yeah. in order for it to go on streaming platforms and for him, his he's going to have to endorse it. So it's not going to matter who made it. Like this Drake song is so fire. Mm -hmm. I would love to bop around and listen to it. It is kind of weird because it's this AI thing. Mm -hmm. But if Drake went out and put that out, He's endorsing that as a brand. And so as these tools become more accessible and are doing more things for creators, creators brand in personality and what they endorse becomes more valuable. And so in the case, this guy, this ghostwriter dude in the comments, he was like, I've been a songwriter. I wasn't paid for so many things. Now I'm going to kind of like 
took over the industry was his kind of perspective. In- and interesting. And it's cool how he's really shaken up the industry and really cut still through the anonymous? noise. Yeah, he's still anonymous. Mm-hmm. He put out another song. He's like, get ready. There's more coming. And I think what's really fascinating is if someone, what's going to happen is going to be people that understand how to use this technology to make an incredible Drake song. Imagine if this guy made five to 10 Drake songs at that caliber and sent them to Drake. Hey, I'm a songwriter. Look what I made. Yeah. This is a great tool for songwriters and creatives that want to get placements that want to be writers because people are doing this stuff already. Mm-hmm. People are writing songs for Drake, for Post Malone, for all these artists. They're get they're in the room with writers who are presenting them songs all the time. Mm-hmm. This is a tool that will allow people that are creative that have this skill set to be able to present their ideas and actually cut through as a songwriter. That is like, I don't know, this is like so interesting to me that we are seeing emerging technology happening in front of our eyes. Like when we were kids, we saw the internet happen, but we were so young, we couldn't fully understand what we were seeing in front of us. This is insane. Not only did we see Web3, which was (laughs) like that happened so fast. Now everyone is talking about like this new AI. And like even having this conversation with you, I'm getting so many ideas of what I could even utilize AI for. And that's what I was going to ask you about, which is as a creator and someone who's been on the Internet for over 10 years, do you worry with these technologies that someone's going to come out, for example, and manipulate or use your voice (laughs) to make a piece of content or, you know, like, how do you feel I mean, about it being a creator in the YouTube space? I feel like as a creator in the space, I've had people photoshopping my bodies and my face onto things. But, like, you know, you can tell those are fake. I mean, I'm not too worried about deep fakes because, one, I'm not popular enough. And, two, like, you can tell once. Like, I could just easily be like, that's a deep fake. That's well, what if up. it? W- what if and it when? So, and like, we're realistic. getting to that point pretty soon where it's almost indistinguishable from or the original source which is why this drake song really cut through mm-hmm. the noise because it was the first time that there was a piece of music where it was almost indistinguishable from oh real drake for me for being a listener who isn't a huge Drake, like i enjoy drake i don't listen to him that much also my ear isn't as like it's like as good as yours right i was like this is like I didn't I couldn't distinguish Drake from this AI. I couldn't. And at most all. consumers can. Exactly. You know, it's gotten to that point. And again, it's we're not at that point because again, this guy clearly has high skill in not only writing songs, using this technology mm-hmm. where your everyday person is doesn't have the isn't able to go create something like this. And that's where I was kind of coming back to is these are really, really productive tools if you learn how to use them yes and as technology continues to implement them more and more yeah yeah i almost think it went viral because people believed he used a computer ai software to do every single thing and he over exaggerated that right to go more viral but i think i don't know if he over exaggerated it i think he must have like had to mix it it wasn't like oh yeah it wasn't like ai mixed it for him and mastered it for him i know how difficult that is exactly that's what i'm saying everyone thinks that he didn't write the song i'm sure he did i think he so i don't think he was trying to hide behind that i think he said this is an ai generated song but to most people that are consumers to, that aren't very fully aware what ai is they think oh ai generated this song he just pushed a button saying make me a song that sounds like drake and then it just popped out a song that sounded like drake instead of well no. that's exactly and that's why we're having this conversation no, exactly. because yeah. i was very impressed with this guy's skill after I did my due diligence of trying to figure out how yeah. could I do this as well, realizing there is so much that goes on to this. This mm-hmm. guy had to write the song. He had to choose the lyrics. He had to choose the cadence. He had to choose the melody. He had to take the vocals, put them on a beat. He had to mix but, it. He has yeah. to do so many things okay, that require so many why, years of experience. That's why I'm saying that I am not scared of deep fakes or anything like that because it takes a very specific skill. Are they really yeah. going to waste it on me or are they going to waste it on like Nancy Pelosi or like Doja Cat or uh, I don't know, someone like hot, like Dua Lipa. Like why would they, like why would they go that far in for little old me? Oh, stop. Little old me, no. I, I, did, I meant it more in the sense of like, how? what are your overall thoughts about this? Being oh, a creator. Okay. Well, I'm excited to use it in like, maybe not so much as a creator, but using it. I would love to ask ChatGBT, what does a perfect day for a human look like? And then following it to a T on my YouTube channel and then calling it ChatGBT tells me what to do for a day. Or like, 
um, what is a perfect outfit to wear to it- Italy when I go to Italy? And then it's like, I wore outfits chat GBT made me for a week. Like, And I think that that sort of type of content is probably on its way out because the the excitement of seen people doing it well maybe not that per se but like that will have its time and then that'll exactly. run out and people won't be like oh that's so cool chat gpt gave you this idea and the real benefit of chat gpt is you using it just like a google search to give you ideas bless you <laughs> again so I for example haven't... if you use chat gpt to be like what are the top youtube trends right now and what are some ideas that you know and so you start to done that mm -hmm. and it sucks again it could be the way i input information for it but it really was not helpful it's it's in part both things for sure and so right now they're not giving the best ideas but if you figured out how to prompt it better you would get better ideas and so that is a skill on itself and also there's other ai tools it's not like chat gpt does everything so chat chat gpt has really beneficial functions for for it but for example a way you can mend the two, and I'm just thinking this on the spot, is like, how can you use certain AI or technology in general to tell you what are the top trending searches, you, right? You can use like Google Analytics and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but you can use these different type of technologies to tell you and give you the data of what people are searching. What are competitors doing and what are they searching? What are they talking about in their videos? And you take a list like that, then you ask ChatGPT, hey, give me a video idea that has to do with X, Y, and Z that's based on this. For example, I was watching this YouTube video, which was like the 10 best AI tools you need to be starting to use or use. And one of them was for podcasts where you could take any YouTube video, hour, three hours long, it will cut it down into like 20, 30 different short form clips that you can post. It will then also give you those 20 to 30 short form clips based on what are people searching the most on Google in YouTube that are in comp- that are competitors for you. Yeah. Piece and of like, content. Again, we're not there yet at all. And mm-hmm. as of now, I mean, people are never going to divulge that they're using it until yeah. it becomes like so incredibly mainstream. But in the last thing I'll say on it too, because we could talk about this forever is that even Adobe, for example, I think it was a couple weeks ago, they, implemented an entire AI um, software in their program now where it'll like video replace your background. So now it's like whatever you create on what Adobe. What do you mean video editing background? So you could be like, give me a, a mountain scenery and it'll replace the background with like a mountain scenery video. Like a green screen? Yeah, but like very realistic and you can search whatever you want. And so they're starting to, to use these things. So for example, in Photoshop, you could be like mm-hmm. type different backgrounds and it'll like swap it out and give you an AI generated background, which is insane. You know what I've been super interested in? Cause I know you're super interested in AI, mm-hmm. but we can keep talking about AI. No, no. Yeah. I'd love to hear. I have been super into high interest savings, bond saving accounts. And last week I was like, Matt, you need to download Robin hood and get Robin. Well, I have Robin hood. Well, I know you have Robin hood, but I was like, do you have Robin hood gold? No. Did you get it? No. Since telling you about it no see okay you know what the number one thing people need to realize is your money sitting in a bank that has very low interest is you losing money not only because it you could be making money on your money but also because inflation is higher than the 0.01 percent you're getting per year on your mom and pop wells fargo savings account right that's what i'm getting in my college savings account is 0.01 percent every year but inflation is like two and a half percent so on yeah, average. It's like, so you're losing money. Mm-hmm. But because inflation has been so high lately and interest rates have also been so high, that means you can make a little bit of money on your savings account. And so I know everyone knows that Apple just came out with a high interest savings account that was, I believe, 4.15%. Well, I've been using Robinhood's high interest savings account for about three months now, and it's 4.4%. Like, guys, these numbers are unheard of. So, Matt, you need to get one of these. So, break this down for someone who's listening. How how does it work? How much does it cost? What is something practical they can do with maybe some, if they have mm-hmm. a couple thousand dollars sitting in an account right now, um, 
that they want to maybe make a little money on. Yeah. So for me, I only know Robin Hood because that's the what that's where I'm starting to slowly put my money in. I put in twenty thousand a couple months ago and then I made sixty dollars a month on my twenty thousand, which is crazy. Let, let, let me tell you here, I've had two hundred thousand dollars in my bank account and I was making five dollars every three months on my okay. So making sixty dollars on twenty thousand in one month is crazy to me mm -hmm. so um you pay five dollars for robin hood gold it's like their m annual membership but as long as your um account has more than fourteen hundred dollars on it it'll it'll be over five dollars a month you're getting so that that pays for it so if you have more than fifteen hundred dollars in the bank stick it in robin hood um and just like any regular savings account every single month they'll, your money will accrue and they'll pay it out for you but what I'm saying, why I'm saying this is because you want your money to be making money for you and just sitting there. And to be quite honest, I do have a lot of money in my bank accounts that I should flex that I should all. I mean, I've been working for 12 years. So have I. Well, have you been working? longer? OK, well, I was working since I was 14. But have you been good at saving your money? Since you're 14. No. I mean, I've been working since I was 16. So let's be honest. I've been working for 14 years then. And then illegally. Yeah, I think I'm most people are working hard. Like the average person works really hard. Yes. You know, the average but person. But were you has... working full time at 22 years old like I was? At 22? Yeah. How else was I? Were you part time at a restaurant or were you actually full time 40 hours a week? I was part time at a restaurant, but I was also more than part time working on video production stuff and music. So it's. Hard to quantify the exact number, but I've been full time pursuing work, making money, building skills. <clears throat> yeah, well, I got lucky where my 22 year old salary when I was when I turned 22 and graduated college was like a proper full time salary. Yeah, it's not a flex. It's like I, I just got really freaking lucky in life that I saw social media as a way of making income and getting myself out of the poverty that I lived in, which I think And that's a incredible. testament also for you probably not chasing money. You were just chasing your interests at the time when you started making videos, right, in high school, because why would anyone back then really be making no one videos was making money. unless they were interested in it, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that there's also a lesson to be said there. Like, you can't just focus on what makes you money. You have to focus on building a skill for something that you actually enjoy doing. Yeah. And you can't control anything else. Right. Like that is how life is like that is the truth of life. Like no matter what the circumstances, you get lucky. But in order to be lucky, you have to be following something mm -hmm. that's valuable to yourself. You're not just like, of course, there's so many possibilities in the universe where you could just get lucky, win the lottery, you know, stumble on a bunch yeah. of money. But let's be honest that you can't count. On, you can't count on that. But yeah. You can always count on your purpose. Yeah. And I mean, I got really lucky where. I also had a full time offer that I knew I could always like go back to. Little security YouTube blanket yeah. didn't work out for me. But what I was saying about this um, high interest rates savings account that you guys can get from Robinhood, the reason why I trust it, because I know a lot of people don't trust Robinhood because of what they did with, when the meme stocks came out. Every single like brokerage account had to stop people from buying meme accounts, which pissed off a lot of people. Got people really mad at Robinhood. I still enjoy Robin Hood. I think what they're doing is really cool as long as you're smart about making stock market trades. But don't go don't put your money into this account and then make money, like try to put your money in the stock. Like don't mm -hmm. do that. Either keep it safe and get the 4.4% interest rate you're going to get that is secured by FDIC. So it's insured up to 1.5 million dollars, which to me is unheard of. I've never heard of an an account that's that's secured at that amount i've heard of two hundred fifty thousand dollars per account which is the average of every single bank account you get if you opened one in the u.s but not 1.5 million dollars because a lot of people do have more than 250k in their stock portfolio if they're retired right or if they're looking to retire soon i think this is so freaking cool and i think everyone needs to why do you think people have resistance like i have a <clears throat> bunch of resistance when it comes to that kind of stuff on making money off of your money just like transferring your money into a different platform i think there is some fear especially with at New least technology. for me, my first thought is like, okay, how much am I going to make if I put in, let's say, a few thousand dollars? Um, how much is it? Is it going to be a hundred dollars over the year? And then that feels like, okay, if I make a hundred dollars from this money being in Robinhood, what is the risk reward versus, let's say, something happens with Robinhood and Robinhood gets shut down? That was my initial fear and thought was like, it's not worth it for me to take this money out of my bank and put it into an institution 
where we've seen that these institutions have crashed and burned. And I know Robin Hood is a different story. I but mean, no, it could be the same story with like um, Silicon Valley Bank of the first Federal Reserve, whatever the first bank is called first. Oh my God, I just was looking into this. Either way, yeah, this could happen to them. But the thing is the FDIC, which is government backed, insurance um that all the banks have to pay into is going to secure our money so like you have that same type of risk not so much with like a big bank like chase but like your right. accounts are insured up to two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. but if you have more than that they're not it's not insured. right right with robin hood it's insured up to 1.5 million dollars which this is why it makes me feel a lot more oh, secure I see. yeah i don't have more than 250 in my robin hood let me be honest but it just makes me feel nice that they do have higher insurance for their members that are paying mm-hmm. into this. And if there was any sort of like, oh my God, this might be happening, like Robin Hood is going down, what I think will happen is what is happening with Silicon Valley Bank, Congress is going to step in and be like, okay, everyone is insured. Like the first Federal Reserve Bank, I think that's the one that just went under an SF, they um, lost $100 billion in deposits. Congress didn't pay it, but the FDIC, that was the insurance, paid everyone out. Yeah. So There is some security. There is some security, but I'm just saying that it is worse to have your money just sitting in a bank account. So you don't have to go with Robinhood. There's many options. There's Apple, which we know has the largest reserve of cash. American cash ever than any other company. They have 4.15%, right? But if you have more than $7,000, the 4.4% with the $5 fee on Robinhood Gold actually outweighs. Oh, really? The 4.15% on Apple. But that's if you have 7,000, which a lot of people don't have. Right. Right? So yeah, actually Apple might be the better bet if you have more than, if you have less than seven. But then there's also um, Chase has, American Express, I believe, has a high interest savings account, or is it Chase? That it's like 3.6, right? So those are a little bit safer, Mm -hmm. but the safest thing is actually a treasury bond. That's 5%. Wow. Okay. That is the highest it's been in 16 years. However, it is difficult to navigate treasurydirect.gov, which is the only place you can buy it unless you go through a brokerage or a financial planner that's going to buy it for you, but they take a percent. So then you go down to 4%. And again, you can get 5%, except you have to wait for your bond to mature. If you're like, I just had an emergency. I actually need my money back. You lose three months worth of interest payments. So that's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's definitely. But it's a little bit easier. So like once your um, bond matures, you actually have to rebuy into another bond. So it's not automatic. So it's a little bit of back end work, a little bit Mm -hmm. more education. So most people either just go for a high interest yield savings account or they buy into an ETF that only holds treasury bonds. But I will say the smartest thing to do with your money if you have it sitting around is actually buying a treasury bond because any interest you get from it is non-taxable at the state level. Oh, wow. The federal government will still tax it, but California will not be taxing it, which at our rate is 10%. If you're on the highest bracket, 6% if you're like Mm -hmm. a normal bracket. I mean, that's still like 6% more money that you're keeping Mm -hmm. from your money making money. Mm -hmm. Either way, this was a short little rant on me being like, guys get your money it's just uh, in something we always say and i'll say it again it's so crazy they don't teach us this this stuff stuff in school like it seems such an obvious course of how applicable and important it is which is to save your money to build your credit when you have x amount of money you should be putting it in um a roth you should be putting Mm -hmm. it in treasury bonds you should be doing this like the little loopholes that make sense you know at certain points you get taxed about this and it makes sense you know there's so many different nuances and ways that you can be really smart with your money but why is no one teaching that well i feel like the education system isn't teaching it because they want us to stay there always has to be a hierarchy right so the government is not going to be like well everyone should like try to make money and be rich because then yeah. How would they control us? True. I'm like getting like conspiracy theory. Here, it's not like, conspiracy. It's like they need people to be the ones that are yeah. mowing the lawns and taking out the trash. If you're for in us. control, you don't want to give up control. Let's exactly. be honest. No one does. Mm-hmm. That's how we've gotten to this place as a society, as a race. 100%. And it's it, a religion. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I do think it's such a valuable conversation to have that I even want to learn so much more about. Get Robin Hood. Yeah, I will get Robin Hood gold or whatever but 
we should have an episode dedicated to maybe like the best practices with money or something. Or it would be really cool to bring on a guest that's very credible and can give people very practical steps with like five things you should definitely be doing with your money Mm -hmm. and break it down in a digestible way. I love that. Because that's something that I would find so valuable. Mm -hmm. So we should definitely keep the conversation going as we have already kind of touched on this stuff. But time for... Am I rotten though? All right, guys. If you guys already know and you guys have been watching the pod, we do this every week. We've missed a couple of weeks though, but make sure to submit your Am I Rotten submissions or Rotten Confessions, Rotten whatever down below in our Google. Or if you just want to tell us something cool. Yeah. Like anything cool worth sharing and talking about, we'd love it. We'd you love know, to hear. Obviously, we have a structure, but submit. Yes. Okay. So, am I rotten? While my boyfriend was sleeping, I looked at his notifications. His iPhone was locked. I didn't know his password and was only able to see the app names. And I saw an app I did not recognize. I don't have his password, so I searched the app into the app store on my phone, and it was a dating app. Oof. When I confronted him about having a dating app on his phone, he replied with he was at work with his coworkers and they were talking about this app and he wanted to see what it was all about. Shady. Sure. You you know it was a dating app. It's not like you didn't know what the app was that you were downloading. He said he didn't like any profiles or message anybody or couldn't see anything because the app required a subscription. I don't understand his reasoning. If he was so curious, why didn't he ask his coworker to see his instead? Smart. I asked him to show me his app. If he didn't sign up for anything, there shouldn't be anything on it, right? So I asked him to show me his DMs and I saw two messages and he turned his screen off. Then he tries to tell me they are the robots trying to get you to get a subscription on the app. Am I rotten for being nosy and looking at his notifications? No. No. If you have a hunch, obviously this was worth looking into. And obviously this guy is just nothing but rotten because his story doesn't add up. If it was bots, why wouldn't he just share that? And there is just no reason for him to be on a dating app, right? Yeah. Like, what is the point? You want to see what? You want to see what the app is about? Why? Why do you care about dating other people? Like, what is the point? But she's right. Why don't you just look at your friend's app? Well, she's, she's making a logical response for something that it's is illogical yeah is illogical his he was lying his logic well, I mean, didn't even make sense well, i mean when my friends are on dating apps i'm like can i look and i'll swipe for you like I've that's that different before. but to go through the process of downloading it creating a profile yeah that's f-ed up like what do yeah so i'm just gonna off the bat it's Would just you not consider even that cheating no really I, that's not downloading che- a dating app it's not cheating but that doesn't mean that it's okay i think that's gr- i think you should break up with that person without a doubt if they're poking around, like, why would you want to be with someone that is that interested? I mean, interested? he's thinking about... He's thinking about he's it. Thinking he's about hiding cheating. it. He's wanting to get attention from other people. Yeah. Break up with that person. That's going to just... do. They're showing you who they are. Take that information. Once someone shows you who they are, that's who they are. I mean, this is a red flag if I've ever seen one. And please run away from the red flags. Absolutely. I mean, everything that was described in this is like... The excuse didn't make sense. Him being shady about showing what the messages Mm -hmm. were. I mean, so many signs of just completely lying. Okay, but let's back up. She said, am I rotten for looking at his phone? Would you find me rotten if I was snooping through your phone? I mean, it's definitely breach. It was insane just now. Why? What was that? What were you just thinking just now? I was just thinking like, I think it's really difficult because on one hand, it's like completely breaking trust. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, it's like, was there a reason that you were, if you were just randomly looking at my phone because you didn't trust me, then that's a different story. But if you Isn't had that either way, like you'd be looking through your phone because you feel something is off or wrong. So then when does it become bad? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm having a hard time figuring out yeah. what the, what the balance is. The story makes sense. I don't think she's rotten, but her question was, am I rotten for even looking at his phone in the first place? No, where there's smoke, there's fire. So you're saying it's a, it is only wrong if you just thought nothing was wrong. I'm trying to figure out the exact way to maybe articulate my thoughts about this because it's kind of like, do you have the trust issue and that's why you're going through the phone? Mm-hmm. Or do you genuinely like not sure if you trust this person? Because I do think that there are two different things. If you're just a not trustworthy person because you haven't done the work on yourself to be confident and trust in your partner if they've given you no reason, yeah. then I would say that that's rotten in that you shouldn't be doing that. You're breaching trust and that's coming from a place of you not 
doing work on yourself. Mm -hmm. But again, that's where it gets difficult in this world that we live in, in the relationships and dynamics between. I mean, like, it's hard to even have trust 100%. Like, there have been moments where, like, I don't trust you 100%. And I'm yeah. positive there's moments that you haven't trusted me 100%. Absolutely. So then when <laughs> one does absolutely you well, say, I say that as I if say like, that, i'm like kissing I say guys that, in front of you no 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 i say that because i think that there is like a overarching overvalue of trusting your partner in the sense of our society makes it feel like it's almost like we're kind of like lying to ourselves about like trust like we're humans mm -hmm. right we get insecure we don't know we have all these different thoughts you can't say that you 100% trust someone all the time. Yeah. I think you learn that over time through experiences, but you don't know people. Mm -hmm. People change, right? Like, I don't know. It's 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 difficult. So trust I just, people? I, I think it's difficult to trust people. And I think that society makes it feel like you should always trust people and that like, it's either like, it's so black and white, I guess, is where I was going with it. It's, it's not black and white. I think you have to earn trust mm. i think you should start with a level of trust giving someone the benefit of the doubt and then if they're giving you reason to not trust them to not trust them then you have to go chase your curiosity a well, little bit i think bit. there are two types of people people who think that they have to earn your trust and people who think they just automatically get your trust and then you lose it like mm -hmm. i actually think about it as like i actually trust everyone until they lose it Mm -hmm. But I feel like you're like, you know, you have to earn my trust. I'm saying even there's with like a that, small like little level. Well, I'm saying even with that, I don't think it's black and white. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a baseline amount of trust you should give someone for a certain set of parameters. But then to go even deeper and build a relationship with someone, that trust is earned over time. Like as a person, you should give people the benefit of the doubt. You should take them for their word. But also you don't know enough about a human being to be able to always understand what their truth is what their motives are and so those things are kind of just learned over time yeah. well i'm just like a very gullible person so like i just always believe what people are telling me and mouth be like uh what are you sure and like you make me like question people which i think is very healthy but i guess for me like i've always just believed mm -hmm. people at their word yeah. and i want to believe that people are you know honest kind real humble people that are being genuine and aren't trying to get anything out of you and i think most people are yeah i think most people are most of the time yeah most people lie in certain settings in there's a scale of how bad those lies are whether they're white whether they're not mm -hmm. you, like everybody is lying all the time you learn as a child to kind of get what you want by lying mm -hmm. you get rewarded for that behavior mm -hmm. and so i think it's really tough especially you know if you've gone through in family or in a relationship where you've dealt with infidelity you learn people just straight up lie and so that can really jade you and yeah. mess with you and it is a very tricky thing to navigate. And even like, you know, we watch Vanderpump Rules. Like these people are compulsive, insane liars. And it's so eye-opening because I didn't think, I mean, I know people lie, mm -hmm. obviously. But seeing them sit there lying so believably in doubling down and not backing down on their blatant lies that are captured on TV. Yeah. It's almost like. I'm learning a little bit more about human psychology. Like people do obviously lie, but it's like, I didn't think people would go that far. Yeah. Well, I mean, once someone shows me that they're a liar, I'm like, okay, well, I can't trust a lot of things you say, but like, if it comes to like new people, I'm just meeting strangers, whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, I believe you until like I figure out you're a liar. But that's the tricky part too, because it's like, once you figure out someone's a liar, but like at what scale for what? You know, if I said, hey, I went to the gym and I worked out for an hour, but I was really only there for 35 minutes, but I didn't want to maybe make it seem like I did a workout or I maybe in that moment wanted to feel better about myself. Would you, you know, take that? I'm no. not saying that's that's happened, but I'm just trying to use like a an example where it doesn't really affect you, but it's more of like a maybe a not or a like, white lie. Like I, I took Zoe on a walk. And I'm like, but I walked like, her for 30 minutes, but it was really just like a couple. It's yeah. like, should I? Do I not trust anything you say? No, it's like there's different. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, tricky. But that's like a little white lie. Like if someone tells me a little white lie, like, oh, like I'm running late, be there in five and they, they come in 20. I'm like, whatever. Like that to me, like doesn't matter. Well, that's because you do that. I don't say I'm going to be there in no, five and kidding. be there in 20. I'll be like, hey, I'm running late. Hey, I got in a car accident. Yeah. Like, no, no well, I've never said that. 
nothing crazy. You fibbed why you're lot late for certain things. Yeah, probably. I mean, but that doesn't who cares. You, <laughs> like, no, everyone well, does that that I know of. But that's what I'm saying is like, at what level does your lie make you an untrustworthy person? Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes down to your morals, your principles, and your ethics, and what you stand for, and what you, you know, what you value as important. And obviously, cheating, lying about finances, lying about certain things carry way more weight. Being a liar is like a scale because we're all liars. Yeah, I mean. I, we lie to ourselves we lie all to the each time. Like, we lie to the people we love because we don't want to hurt their feelings all the time. Like, it's very normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, either way, I don't know how we got here from um, her trusting her boyfriend, but red flag, Well, we got flag. here because the question was, is she rotten for looking Sleeping. at his phone? And then that opens up the conversation of like, when is it okay? Is it okay? I guess for me, because I have nothing to hide. If you were like looking through my phone, I'd be like, okay, well, I mean, it doesn't make me trust you less with my phone. It's just like, I mean, I don't know what I would think. It would just, I guess I'd really have to experience this. I wouldn't make you feel bad for it unless I was hiding something. So that to me is the only thing that would yeah. then make me go like, okay, well, why are you getting so defensive of me looking through your phone then? And then it would make me want to look through it even more. So either way, this is really difficult to navigate unless it's happened to me so i honestly think she should be yeah. like i want to look at your phone again because clearly you've downloaded a dating app i don't know who you're texting i don't know who you're dming clearly you're trying to look for something so yeah if she was like give me your phone right now i'd be like go do it please yep yep most times if there's smoke there's fire yeah i love that saying all right well thank you guys for listening if you guys are new make sure to subscribe and give us those five stars baby and let five us know stars. down below if you've ever um, tripped a tooth, I would I would have said tripped if you've ever tooth. snooped through your significant other's phone, but I feel like most people wouldn't want to admit that. But like, if you've ever tripped a tooth, <laughs> only because I'm tripped. Do you tooth think tip. there's more people that will admit to looking through a phone, or will there be more people who have actually chipped their tooth? Because I've never chipped a tooth. Do people like is that okay, very common? Okay, Mister Drinking Calcium, Drinking Protein all day long. Okay, like not everyone is as healthy as you. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying are chipped tooths common? I guess I didn't realize. Yeah, when I got my tooth chipped, two girls who were sitting on the couch were like, "I chipped my tooth. Look at it." And I'm like. <laughs> god damn it like i mean okay. i mean i've chipped my tooth as a kid trying to open a nail polish bottle this is yeah. my third time actually chipping Jeez. my front teeth so i'm like whatever yeah. this has happened plenty of time anyways all right comment down below if you're <laughs> chipped a tooth chipped a tooth like chippy over here stop <laughs> honestly i'm like every time matt's like a little like like not grumpy at me or just like he's not like smiling i'm like you like i like like to give him my chip tooth smile <laughs> so that I could see crackhead him smile. Energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I was like, I feel like I'm a crackhead right now because I chipped a tooth. All right. Anywho, Alrighty. see you guys next week. See you next Tuesday, guys. See you next Tuesday. All right, bye guys. Bye guys.